ಸಾಗರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣಾರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಹರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗಣಲಿತ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಶುಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಕರ್ಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯೀತೀತಾಂಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿರಾಧನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮನೆ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಏಕಾದಶಿ ತಿಥಿ So, in Kuala Lumpur, Ikadashi Tithi is uh, tomorrow. I think India is celebrating Ikadashi today. Uh, so, just a quick reminder. And uh, as I had mentioned earlier, on uh, Saturday, if I am not wrong, we are having the Ram Jayanti Festival. Janmashtami is coming up as well. Prabhupada Pirinci is coming up as well. a lot of auspicious festivals a lot of reasons a lot of opportunities to make advancement a lot of reasons to absorb ourselves in spiritual consciousness very good so we are going to continue our discussion on the ninth chapter the crest jewel of the topics of the bhagavad gita the king of all knowledge the king of all education so anyone wants to just quickly explain or mention what is the topmost knowledge equal to what is krishna talking about what is this topmost knowledge just two three words who wants to raja vidya raja guna yeah that is the that means king of knowledge but what is that king of what is that knowledge surrendering to krishna surrendering to krishna but what is the specific term krishna uses there are many levels of surrender what is the surrender krishna talks about krishna uses a particular word for it ananya bhakti prabhuji yeah ananya bhakti exclusive devotional service krishna has been hinting about devotional service spoken a bit about devotional service but he is talking about exclusive devotional service which is not covered by jnana and karma but the exclusive desire or motivation for bhakti is not liberation is not to become free from karma is not to become free from the cycle of birth and death but the motivation is just to love and serve krishna where the devotee just finds that joy in loving and serving krishna so we discussed previously up to verse 19 and uh krishna after hinting in 9.14 krishna hinted at pure devotional service 
the ninth chapter, he indicated what is the nature of the Ananya Bhakta in 13 and 14. Mahatmanas to Maam Partha, Daivim Prakriti Mashritaha, Bhajanti Ananya Manaso, Ananya, Jyatva Bhuta Dimabhyayam. Then their characteristics, Satatam Kirtayanto Maam Yatantascha Dhrabhrataha, Namasyantascha Maam Bhaktyan Yukta Pasta. So in 13 and 14, Krishna summarily describes how the pure devotees, the exclusive pure devotees, are constantly engaged in an absorbed manner in worshipping him with love, exclusive love, that love which has no conditions, that love which has no expectations, that love is the highest. And it is that love that can actually purchase Krishna. Otherwise, with all other forms of love, one may be able to get some blessing from Krishna, one cannot purchase Krishna. It is only Ananya Bhakti that Krishna gets purchased. So after that, having described that, Krishna also explains, this is where we ended roughly, where Krishna says, if you cannot come to this point of Ananya Bhakti, then there are three other below bhakti, I mean below ananya bhakti of course is mixed bhakti, but below that is three kinds of worship, which is even lower than bhakti. Ekatvena, Prithaktvena, Bahuda, Vishwato Mukham. Where there are three categories of worship, the Vishwarupa Upasana, which was discussed in the last time, of how the Lord is conceived as being, as the universe is conceived as being the form of the Lord. The Lord is worshipped as such. And that description is given in verses 17 to 19. And then there are two more types, the Pratikopasana, where one imagines a particular form of a particular Devata to be the form of God, and one worships them as God. Or one imagines a form of God altogether, a self-conceived form of God, and worships that. So that is Pratikopasana. Pratika means representation. And then the third is Ahangraha Upasana. Ahangraha Upasana where one has a concept that one himself is not different from God. So that Ahangraha Upasana we discussed is not something which this chapter discusses. Krishna brings up a detailed discussion of this Ahangraha Upasana where because of a not actually understanding the truth properly, one reaches a wrong understanding that just because I have the same quality as God, I am the same as God, I am God. And he worships himself as God to make spiritual advancement. So this is an idea which is getting very common nowadays also in so many new age systems. But Krishna puts this idea much lower. Much lower even than mixed devotion. What to speak of pure devotion? Pure devotion is the topmost level. Below that is mixed devotion. And below that is other yogas mixed with some devotion. Below that is yogas without devotion. Below that is performing fruitive activity. So within that realm of fruitive activities and jnana, all these various kinds of worships come. But actually... Uh, devotion may have a very small role, if at all, to play. So what Krishna is going to discuss now, verses 20 onwards, is the topic of Pratika Upasana. Krishna had already explained in the 7th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, what is it or what is the difference between his worship and worship of the Devatas? How attaining the abodes of the devatas is actually a temporary attainment and how even if one wants to worship the devatas, the faith for that worship is given by Krishna. The result of that worship is also given by Krishna. And that is why Krishna in the 7th chapter says, Kama is jnana devataha. But those who are affected by lust, they are not Material lust, which means they want something materially very badly instead of going to the parents and getting from them because they fear the parent will not give them that. 
you go to the shopkeeper give me give me give me and just take some money from the father or mother and quietly go there and try try to find a work around in the system kama is the is there the kya so krishna is going to go into a little bit more depth into this idea of pratikopasana in the ninth chapter is the same concept which was discussed in seventh in fact most of the ideas in the ninth chapter are quite similar to what is discussed in seventh but at a more depth keeping pure devotion in focus whereas in the seventh chapter the principal the knowledge aspect was the focus a knowledge of the lord was the focus now pure devotion to the lord is the focus and that is why the same subject is being penetrated into a greater depth so the lord is going to extra extrapolate and uh, not extrapolate uh, continue from where he left off his discussion on the seventh chapter and is going to get a bit more deeper and let's see what the lord is trying to say because what he is going to say now is very important to understand from the perspective of pure devotees because he is going to be very very explicit in terms of the difference between worshipping him and worshipping the devatas so we are starting with verse 20 so here in verse 20 krishna is talking about ritualistic worship of the devatas especially through the process of sacrifice traividyamam soma papu tapapa yajnay rishtva swargatim prarthayante te punyam asadya surendra lokam ashnanti divyan dividev bhogan that those who perform yajna sacrifices according to the vedas after having studied and who drink the soma juice and they aspire to achieve the heavenly planets through the performance of those yajna so when one performs certain yajnas properly one can actually attain the heavenly planets and if you remember krishna had hinted at that in the 7th chapter that the highest you can attain is attain the abode of the devatas and those who worship like this they become through the process of yajna become purified of their papa soma pa puta papa ha soma pa by drinking the soma juice they become purified of sin and then they take birth in the heavenly planets where they enjoy godly delights so krishna is explaining the whole process of worship of the devatas through yajna with a desire to attain heaven now most of religion is focused on this idea most of the people in religion are not even worshiping god because they want to attain liberation they want to be free from the cycle of birth and death what do they want just be free from my sins go to heaven and enjoy which is of course definitely better than leading a sinful life in this world but that idea is also not so great because a brahma bhuvana loka punar avartin arjuna even if you go to heavenly planets birth old age disease and death are not going to keep you but krishna says those who take this process and follow the yajna system in one sense indirectly they are also worshiping me why because they are following the system that i have given this yajna system is given by me i have given this system even though this is not the best way to worship me because they are following the vedas soma pa puta pa pa and trai vidya mam those who are following the three vedas because the vedic system is my system krishna says if you remember in the third chapter of the bhagavad gita krishna explains that the human body comes from food grains food grains come from rain rain comes from performance of 
यज्ञ नाद भवती भूतानी पर्जन्याद अन्य संभव यज्ञाद भवती पर्जन्यो यज्ञ कर्म समुद्भव That yajna comes by fruitive activities, and fruitive activities come from the Vedas. Vedas come from the breathing of the supreme personality of Godhead. That is why supreme personality of Godhead always resides within his rules and regulations of the scripture. Also, I am reciting. You are following the system, even though you are not directly desiring to worship me and love me. Still, correct. For example, even if a citizen, even if a citizen is not really patriotic and loving the country, the least he can do is at least be a peaceful citizen and follow the laws and rules of the country, isn't it? Do you agree? Please, that means you don't really love your country. You don't want to do something great for your country. Sacrifice yourself. At least be a law-abiding citizen. That is the absolute minimum. If you go below that, you get punished. At least be a law-abiding citizen. Even if you don't do anything great for your country, then the country at least accepts. Yes, he follows my laws. So in that sense, I interpret that he is following me because he is following my laws. That is following the laws because he wants something or he fears something. That's another matter. At least he is within the system. So Krishna is accepting such people as also part of the system, as worshiping him indirectly because they are followers of the Vedas. And such souls they follow these rules and regulations of the Vedas, and they are actually able to get heavenly delights. Soma paha puta papa ha. Now, the soma juice is often times very much uh, wrongly understood. Some people think the soma juice is some alcoholic beverage, just like the you know the rums and the whiskey and the brandy or whatever people drink on this earth. But Bhagavad Gita says no soma pa puta papa ha. When you drink soma puta papa ha, you become free from sin. When you drink liquor, you increase sin. When you drink soma, soma is not an alcoholic beverage. Soma is like an elixir of life. Apparently, the scriptures say that the soma juice is abundantly available on the moon. The moon is the celestial body which is responsible for giving a taste for vegetables. Bhagavad Gita also explains this that through the moon the taste comes, the moon rays. There is the sun. The sun does a particular kind of nourishment to vegetation. The moon also does a particular kind of nourishment to the vegeta vegetation. And scriptures say the moonlight gives a particular taste. The moonlight performs a particular role, which somehow modern science also so far hasn't quite discovered. So that taste, that nourishment. Apparently, on the Chandra Loka, that kind of a beverage is available for the celestial heavenly planets. Of course, if you go to the moon, we may not be able to see them because they may be having subtle bodies, not necessarily gross bodies. So, when they drink that, in very simple words, we can call it a tonic. It's an elixir of life. It is such a wonderful, invigorating energizing drink that it not only strengthens the body mind and senses and purifies it it destroys sinful reactions by purifying the heart that is the power of that tonic so much we wish that tonic was available here but if you want to drink it it's not available on amazon or lazada or wherever you have to go to heavenly planets drink it so through performing these yajnas, they go there, they drink and they enjoy a beautiful, happy life where they can experience the material joy. But then what happens? Is that an eternal enjoyment? 
is it that wow i have achieved my final destination i am on indra loka chandra loka wonderful krishna explains what happens to them if you go on a vacation vacation has to come to an end so krishna says te tam bhuktva swarga lokam vishalam shine punne martya lokam vishanti evam trai dharman anuprapanna gatagatam kama kama labhante when they have enjoyed on the heavenly planets a lot how much can they enjoy as long as their punya allows very simple it's like you go on a vacation if i go to switzerland how long can i stay in switzerland of course visa is one thing but at the end of the day even if i have a long visa i need to pay for the hotel i need to pay for the food uh, one meal in switzerland even the simplest meal will call 100, 100 ringgits for one person so one day meals for a family of four is like almost a thousand ringgit breakfast lunch dinner so it's not cheap you have to pay a huge cost so do you have that much of punya and when you exhaust your enjoyment of all your punya shine punya shine means depleted when your punya becomes depleted martya lokam vishanti you again enter martya lok this earth planet evam trai dharmam anuprapanna gata gatam kama kama labhante so those who become attached to this kind of an approach to enjoyment do pious activity do yajna go to a heavenly place enjoy all your enjoyment is over you have used up your pious credits come down then again perform punya in another life again go up again enjoy again come down krishna is saying that arjuna this is not very clever because you are still birth old age disease that birth old age disease that how is this very different from working hard in this life here on this planet and going for a short vacation the same you earn money you go for a vacation enjoy for some time come back and again go on through your road and again you are going to go through birth old age disease and death. krishna is saying this approach is not very intelligent so this kind of worship of the devatas through the karma system is not arjuna not going to give a lasting permanent benefit and those who take up to this process have to keep on performing yajna and it is not easy execution of yajna and all that requires a lot of austerity a lot of punya a lot of hard work but why are they taking such a difficult challenging path why don't they take the simpler path of worshiping so krishna is suggesting the better alternative 9.22 what does he say he says ananyas chintayanto mam ye janaha padyupasate desham nityabhyuktanam yoga kshemam vahamyaham we have probably quoted this verse uh, thousand times in our various classes so it may sound very familiar to you but finally we have reached the discussion of the shloka and this is a very very famous verse is also a very very comforting verse where krishna is giving the whole uh, the the most appealing reason for people like us Who are who are always asking what is in it for me? Whenever we are told about any process, right? So oh, you should do this. You should do this. And the first thing is, what do I get? Huh? If I take this, what do I get? So Krishna is telling, what is in it for me in the process of worshiping devatas, and what is in it for me when you worship him? So there, in the process of the devatas, you have to go on recharging. Like your talk time, you use up. 
recharge. Use up, recharge. So you have to work hard to get money to recharge. So, Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam goes on. But Krishna says, here Arjuna, if you simply worship me exclusively with pure devotion, Ananyas Chintayanto, again the word Ananya. Ananya means you are not bothered about worshipping other devatas. Your heart is exclusively devoted to me. Pari Upasade. Pari means completely. Pari Upasade. Properly worshipping. Properly, completely. The same thing. Tesham Nitya Abhiyuktanam. Those who are constantly connected to me like this. Fixed in my devotion. I provide them what they lack and protect what they have. Very nice. So Krishna is saying, see, in other systems, you have to struggle to gather money, decide what you want to do, go here, go there, try to enjoy all this. If you worship me, you don't have to think about anything. You simply have to worship me and I take care of giving you the best. Whatever you don't have, I will give it to you. Don't have to worry. And whatever you have or whatever you achieve, also I will protect. This is known as the spiritual insurance policy. Which This is the phrase which Life Insurance Corporation of India has chosen as its slogan. Yoga Kshemam Baham Yaham. But their insurance policy can fail, but Krishna's insurance never fails. Esham Nitya Abhyuktanam Yoga Kshemam Baham Yaham. Whatever you don't have, Arjuna, I will ensure that it is provided. You don't even have to place an order. Because I will act like your parent. I will not act like a shopkeeper. That you have to gather money, go to the shop, this is the price, this is what you pay. No. If you simply love me, whether you do pious activities or you don't do pious activities, I'm not even going to calculate that. Krishna is saying, I am not even going to count your punya. I am not going to count your yadnyas. I am just going to see if you are loving me exclusively. And if you love me exclusive, exclusively, I reciprocate by giving you exclusive shelter and protection. And my protection, my nourishment includes comprehensive coverage. Because I treat you like my child. I don't treat you like a customer and a shopkeeper. I treat you like my own child because you are dependent on me by exclusively worshipping me. I take your responsibility. And what does it mean taking your responsibility? It means just like a mother and father. When they take responsibility of the child, they see what does the child need. They determine and they know what the child needs. Even the child may not know what he needs. The Lord knows and the Lord gives. And whatever is there, the Lord makes sure that is taken care properly. The Lord makes sure that the devotee, his spiritual and material life is well fenced, well protected, insured. Wow. Isn't that a better deal? Do you all agree? So this is such a wonderful thing. Why to go on struggling to this yajna, that yajna, and yajna, there are so many problems and faults and at the end, you go to heaven. If at all you manage to do it, you go and then you enjoy. Most people don't even end up going to heaven because who is going to do your yajna in today's time in Kali Yuga? Even the sages headed by Suta Goswami and Shaunaka in the Forest of the Emisharanya, they said, we are trying to do yajna, but our faces have become black from the suit. So difficult to properly do ritualistic yajnas in this yuga. In this yuga, it's not possible. But nor is it necessary because simply by this higher formula of 9.22, we are given the guarantee of yoga shema. Now, Yoga Kshema, the Acharyas explained, can also be understood in a more higher way. A higher way 
especially for devotees who are trying to achieve pure devotion, the yogis, the bhakti yogis who are trying to attain pure devotion to the Lord, the way it can be understood is yoga means the endeavor or the process by which the bhakta is trying to connect to the Lord. And kshema is the reciprocation of the Lord to that endeavor of the devotee by which the Lord gives this shelter, protection and nourishment. Yoga is to connect. Shema is the Lord's reciprocation. So Lord says, I give you yoga, I give you Shema. What does that mean? That means devotees like us, we are struggling so hard to connect to the Lord. Isn't it? Is it easy to chant at least 16 rounds every day, follow four regulative principles, read the Bhagavatam, eat Krishna Prasad, do Aarti and struggle with the world who is not appreciative of our spiritual principles. It's a big struggle. But Krishna says, no, if you are ananya, if you are fixed in your determination to practice, if you are fixed in your attachment to me, I will give you the yoga, which means wherever you are lacking in your ability to connect to me properly, I will give you the strength, I will give you the intelligence, I will give you the help internally and externally. Through the devotees, through the guru, through various arrangements, I will give you the facility to be able to connect to me better and better and better. Which means the Lord walks us, holding our hand, taking us ahead on our spiritual journey. So he only takes us ahead and after we walk two steps ahead, he only glorifies us. Oh, you have come two steps ahead. Wonderful, wonderful. Now I will come four steps towards you. Correct? Like sometimes the parents play a game. No? They only will do something for the child and they will only say, oh, you did this wonderful, so I'll let me reward you now. So the Lord is so kind. He is helping us in both sides of the equation actually. And what is our credit? Our credit is our sincere desire to love him exclusively. Because at the end of the day, what more can we give? Anyway, he is the owner and the Lord of everything. We can only offer our heart, ultimately. Of course, this doesn't mean we don't do other things. We do other things, but we have to understand all other things are coming from him anyways. So essentially, what we are offering to the Lord is our love. So the Lord is so kind. This is such a wonderful... That's why we should never forget this formula. So devotees never become depressed. Why? Because they know... That while in the process of worshipping the Devatas, there are so many dangers. In the process of worshipping Krishna, there is no danger. Why? Because in that process, there was no guarantee. In this process, Krishna is giving guarantee. In that process, if you make mistakes in the Yajna of worshipping the Devatas, you don't get the Yajna Phal. There have been many performers of Yajna because they unknowingly made some mistake. They actually got counter reaction. Rather than getting a good result, they got a bad result. Happens, right? Yeah. Sometimes you want to celebrate Diwali. You are with some firecracker. You light it. You think you'll see a nice, beautiful light. But instead, the firecracker explodes on your face. So you want something, you do something, you get a different result. But for bhakti, there is no danger. Krishna is saying, all I am expecting is ananyas chintayantoma. Think of me exclusively. How hard can that be? Of course, it is not easy, but it is not difficult in terms of execution. All it requires is your heart and desire. It doesn't require complicated rituals. It doesn't require austerities. It doesn't require education. It doesn't matter whether you are a male or a female. It doesn't matter whether you are a child or an old man or a young man. Handicapped, in good health, bad health. There is no material impediment to giving your heart to Krishna. That's why it's such a process is accessible to everybody. But that is not the case with Yajna. Can everybody do it? No. 
even if you want it, can you do it? Difficult to say. And even if you do it, you still have to come back after you exhaust the fruits of your activity. So Krishna contrasts this very beautifully. And then Krishna gives one very beautiful statement in 9.23. He says, please understand. I spoke about Devata worship. I spoke about exclusive devotion to me. He also says, please try to understand that ultimately even the Devatas are, wor are working under me. So even those who are worshipping the Devatas, they are still, like what we discussed a few minutes ago, still within the system. They are also worshipping me indirectly without following the proper system. They are worshipping me in ignorance. They are worshipping me like this. Ye api anya devata bhakta yajante shadhyan vitaha te pimam eva kaunteya yajanti avidipur vakam. Those who are devotees of other devatas, other gods, and who worship them with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. A vidhi purvaka means this is not the proper way to worship me. But they still indirectly worship me because they are like those people who rather than going to the king and following his instructions, they go to the king's government employees. They try to bribe them and get something from them some favor. So this kind of bribing, Prabhupada says, is illegal. It's not appreciated. But nonetheless, even if you go to a government official, at the end of the day, you're going to a representative of the government. In that sense, you're approaching the government. And that is why Krishna says, that is also indirectly approaching me. But that is not the proper way. My recommendation, Krishna says, is worship me exclusively. Don't go and bribe the devatas. Why? Because you must understand that ultimately, even if you go to devatas, I already explained in the seventh chapter, the actual beneficiary of worship is me. Krishna says. Because the devata is only a tax collector. He collects, he passes it to me. He collects, he passes it to me. I give him some commission, some cut for doing his job. And what is that cut? He gets to sit in a nice government bungalow in Indra Loka. He gets some Apsaras dancing. He has some nice personal assistance, paid for holidays. He has a nice package and perks for his job. But he's a tax collector. And the blessings that are coming from the government are not his mercy. It's my grant. It's my giving. It is just coming through him, but I am the giver. Krishna already explained this in the 7th chapter. So Krishna is re-emphasizing, please understand Arjuna, that the actual enjoyer of all worship, whether it's worship directly given to me or given to the devatas, ultimately it's all coming to me. It was meant for me. Because I am the enjoyer, I am the proprietor. Aham visarva yadnyanam bhokta cha prabhurevacha Natumam abhijananti tatve natas chavantite. Krishna, please understand, I am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices. And that is why those who do not understand this about me, they fall down from their spiritual understanding. It's very important to understand. Like Arjuna, I told you, it is not. If a person approaches the devatas with the proper understanding that they are my representatives and deals with them accordingly, then there is no fault. But those who see the system wrongly and they think they are alternative, powerful people that they can go to and get something, uh, that is avidhi purvaka. And they cannot attain me because they do not understand my true position. So it is very important to understand, I am Yadneshwara. Aham hi sarva yadnyanam 
उक्ता प्रभु यज्ञेश्वर इज द एन्जॉयर ऑफ ऑल सैक्रिफाइसेस सर्व यज्ञा भोक्ता एंड सर्व सर्व मीन्स नॉट फ्यू नॉट मेनी ऑल भोक्तारम यज्ञ तपसा सर्वोक महेश्वर सुरदम सर्वूता I am the creator, proprietor, controller, enjoyer. Very important. So, having said that, Krishna again concludes this part of his discussion by saying something similar to what he said in the seventh chapter. So, Arjuna, please understand. I am summarizing again. I have already told you my insurance is pakka, comprehensive insurance. All you have to do is love me. I take care of everything. You go to the devatas, up down, up down, up down. Go through punya, enjoy, come down. Also, when you worship them, actually you are that worship is coming to me only. You are just going there and bribing them, and that's why your worship is not. bearing the proper fruit of spiritual knowledge so better you worship me because i will give you comprehensive coverage but please understand this doesn't mean what i told you doesn't mean that whether you worship the devata or whether you worship me you will attain the same destination no the result that you get in this world will also be different and the result that you get at the end of your life will also be different because worshiping me and worshiping other devatas is not the same and krishna concludes the section by saying yanti devavrata devan pitran yanti pitravrataah utani yanti bhuteja yanti madhyajino pimam those who worship the devatas will take birth on the planet of the devatas at best not that just you show one agarbatti to ganesh you will go to ganesh loka don't think like that on prabhu every day morning prabhu i am going to ganesh loka because i take one agarbatti before going to office and i show to ganesh no this is talking about worshiping properly according to vedic rituals and devoting oneself to the worship of that particular devata according to the detailed system as mentioned in the scriptures then at most one achieves the abode of the devata but what is the problem if one achieves the abode of the devatas problem is abode of the devatas is also an abode in the material world and the devata as well as their abode is also temporary krishna explained this already in the seventh chapter so if you worship the devatas you go to the devatas you worship the ancestors the pitris you go to pitriloka those who worship the ghosts some people worship ghosts even here worships ghosts is your hand ancestor worship is common especially amongst uh, chinese also indians also there is and there is a fair bit of bhuta worship also in india also all this black magic and various so there are some people who will worship a ghost in a tree to get some favor from him so those who worship the bhutas they become bhuta after they die so please don't do all these kind of things if you worship what you worship that you attain so if you worship the the ghost or the various kinds of preta pishacha and others then you attain that species if you worship the ancestors at best you will go to the ancestors if you worship the devatas you can go to the abode of the devatas but those who worship me krishna says yanti mad yajino api mam very simple formula krishna says not all roads lead to rome only the road which leads to rome leads to rome the other road which goes to bombay goes to bombay 
road which goes to Calcutta goes to Calcutta only. So some people have this misunderstanding. It doesn't matter what path I take in spiritual life. They all end up in the same place. That is, that may be their philosophy. That is not Bhagavad Gita's philosophy. Because it is like saying, doesn't matter which school I go to, I will become a doctor. I just have to go to some school. Is that a very sensible argument? I can go to a kindergarten school. There is a kindergarten school next to my house. Does it mean just by going there, I'll be a doctor? Some of those schools may be stepping stones that I accept. Just because one is in that school and that is the school, or if I go to an engineering school, will I become a doctor? No, I become an engineer. If I go to an accounting school, if I go to BAC, Brickfield Asia College, in a law class, I can become a lawyer, I cannot become a doctor. So one cannot argue, oh, there also classroom, here also classroom, there also teacher, here also teacher, there also lessons, here also lessons. But the subject is different. How can you achieve the same destination? Here you are worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There you are seeking some material favors. How can you achieve the same result? So just because something externally appears as a worship, doesn't mean one gets the same result. The result is based on two things. One, the object of worship. Second, the motivation of worship. The motivation and as well as how one is worshipped. That is very, very important. So please don't indulge in any kind of bhuta worship. These do not have anything to do with any black magic, black arts. These are all very dangerous things uh, that if one gets somehow connected, one can become dragged. So Krishna says that those who worship him will attain him. And what happens when we attain Krishna? Do we come back? When you go to the Devata's abode, Ah, Brahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avartino, Krishna has already said. To Brahma Loka, you have to come down. But, Maam Upetya Tu Kaunteya Punar Janmana Vidyate. He has already said earlier that if you come to me, there is no again rebirth. So, when you come to me, you will continue to live with me eternally. Wow. Isn't this so much better? And the previous system, you earn money by performing, uh, money means earn punya money by performing sacrifice, go to heaven, enjoy for some time, spend it, come back. Again earn, go to heaven, enjoy a little bit, come back. And there also it is not that there is no anxiety, even Indra has anxiety. Correct? Just like when we go on a holiday, it is better than being in the job, but it doesn't mean that there is no problem. Even on vacation, we have problems, isn't it? Krishna says, you, if you come to Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha, no anxiety. And Unarjanmana Vidyate, because it was never about Punya, it was about love. Once I admit you into my abode, having accepted you as my loving devotee eternally, there is no going back. You will live with me eternally in the spiritual world. And what will you get? Everything that is mine is yours. Wow. See, rather than going to the shop with some cash, buying something over the counter again and again and earning money, this is such a better deal. You just love God exclusively. God accepts you as a part of his family. When he accepts you, what does he do? He gives you entry into his abode. Then you become a part of his family. When you become a part of God's family, then there is no calculation. What is your punya? What is your this? What is your that? There are no family. Everything that is mine is yours. Krishna is telling the devotee. When the devotee gives everything to Krishna, Krishna gives everything to the devotee. 
Krishna has already said in the Bhagavad Gita, my devotee doesn't know anybody other than me and I do not know anybody other than my devotee. Because it's a transaction of love. It is not a transaction of business. And in love, there is no calculation. Where there is calculation, there is no love. And that is what Ananya is about. Ananya means, I, Krishna, I just love you. I don't love you because you did this for me. Give me this when I asked you. Either you give or you don't give. I love you. I love you for who you are. And I know you are my ever well-wisher. I know you are so wonderful. I just love you anyway. It doesn't matter what happens. And whatever I am suffering must be because of my own karma, Krishna. So I will patiently suffer that and I will continue to love you. So those who talk, take this kind of a mentality and approach the spiritual life, Krishna rescues them very fast from their entrapment in this material world. And then one can transcend all these higher planets, go beyond the Brahma Jyoti, go into Vaikuntha, and go all the way to the topmost planet of Krishna. The having attained which and never has to come back. Isn't it wonderful? What do you think? Do you think it is better? Meenalji, what do you think? Where you want to go? Indra Loka, Chandra Loka, Goloka? Certainly better. Certainly better. Why do you think it is better? Because uh... Ultimately, the real uh, uh, heavenly abode should be the destiny for us. Okay. There is no death and birth and death out there. Constantly having happy, eternal happiness and serving Lord directly. Yes, directly with the Lord. No birth and death. What else? Why is a it a better deal? Permanent. And it's a permanent is position. Yeah. It's a temporary. Yes. The, the attainment with the devatas is temporary. Yes. What else? So what is a better deal? It's always a better deal to worship the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna is saying, Krishna is not criticizing the Devatas. Krishna is saying that, please understand, the Devatas are my representatives. They are empowered by me. And if you understand them as such and treat them as such, that is perfect. There is no problem in that. They are part of the system. But if you think they are independent lords and worship them, thinking that instead of coming to me, you can get something from them, that is not intelligence because ultimately their faith, your faith to worship them and the gifts that you get by worshipping them are coming from me. And worshipping them is indirectly worshipping me and it is not actually the right way. Better. Rather than worshipping them through these technicalities of Vedic rituals and going up and down through the heavens and back to earth, heaven, back to earth through this kind of a purchase transact system. Better you just take the simple process of loving the boss. Is it better to become an employee of a billionaire or is it better to become a family member of a billionaire? Right? If you become an employee, yes, you may say, yeah, I will get a good pay, but at the end you are an employee. You do, you get paid. And then you enjoy. You'll remain an employee. You may grow a bit, but you'll remain an employee. But if you strike a direct relationship with the boss and he appreciates you, he accepts you as a, as a close confidant and makes you a part of his family, then everything that belongs to the billionaire, you're also a part of that whole entourage. Isn't that so wonderful? And this is eternal. It's not temporary. That is why the scriptures say, Asatoma Sadgamaya, Mruttorma Amrutam Gamaya. Go to the eternal. Don't look for temporary. Don't look for this kind of temporary. Whether the temporary is on this planet 
or the temporary is on the devata's planet it is still temporary it is still birth death birth death punarapi jananam punarapi maranam look for that destination mrityum eti transcend death and go to amritatva go to eternal life mrityor ma amrutam gameya get out of this birth and death and go towards immortality which is available in the transcendental realm of vaikuntha and for that asato ma sad gamaya don't get attracted to the asad vastu of this world get attracted to the eternal things the lord the soul tamaso ma jyotir gamaya don't get attracted to the things of darkness get attracted to spiritual light spiritual knowledge that is the message any questions any comments uh, just really one uh, we have done this before and last time we have also given another point there that uh, if we ask demigods we will ask what we think we need but may not be right for us but krishna will give us what we actually need exactly yes so krishna is indicating that here also that's where he says yoga kshema right so when he says yoga he gives what we lack he doesn't say he gives what we ask he gives what we lack some the problem with us is we think we are smarter than god that is our problem uh, we think god god you you please don't interfere in my life i will tell you what you should do for me in my life you do just that that's how we we try to deal with god or materialistic persons try to deal with god correct right god see i have arranged everything this is loophole here this is a loophole here this is you fix this you fix this you fix this if you fix this 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 i will give you this in return thank you very much hare krishna but devotee doesn't think like that he says manasa deho geho jo kichu more arpilu tu apade nanda kishor whatever wealth my mind my body my house everything is yours o lord i am your property i am dependent on you i am taking shelter of you take care of me you know better than me how to take care of me correct if your children start telling you mummy mummy i will tell you how you should take care of me you know you don't understand you laugh right you are a child what do you know and this is why often times children get upset with parents because they think they know better than the parent how the parent should deal with them no no this is not you should do this this is what will make me happy that is but the parents job is not an immediate gratification of the child the parents love the nature of the parents love is the ultimate welfare of the child and keeping the ultimate welfare of the child in mind sometimes the parent may deny an immediate gratification sometimes not just deny sometimes give a punishment to help the child learn a lesson or to grow right even in today's world many psychologists say that our current generation is spoiled i'm talking about the children because the parents give whatever the children want you want this take this you want this you take this they spoil the children so being good to the children is not just about giving what they want is about knowing what they need and giving them that in that way they grow they become fuller complete emotionally stable human beings who can deal with the world i'm talking about parents of this world so similarly when lord krishna wants us to grow spiritually he knows how to coach us train us the problem is we want it our way but as we advance more and more in krishna consciousness we gradually start realizing that oh god you know better how what is the treatment i need you know our our approach sometimes with the lord is just like you know we going to a doctor and telling the doctor doctor i have this and i think this should be the medicine and i think you should put on this treatment me on this treatment plan okay fine okay i'll pay the fees but this is how we agree okay and why you are going to doctor 
you have already your diagnosis in mind you have your treatment also in mind you are your own doctor only you understand yeah so a devotee doesn't approach the lord like that uh, of course using our intelligence based in scripture we do our best to deal with situations in our life in a positive manner but at the end of the day whatever is the outcome we always accept in a positive way understanding all those outcomes to be the lord's desire for us to learn some may be pleasant some may be unpleasant but either way any other uh, questions or comments or anybody wants to add wonderful so thank you all very much so very auspicious uh, festivals coming so please gear up read krishna book every day uh, lord balram jayanti is coming uh, is is a half day fasting so like what i mentioned uh, this saturday since we have a class uh, in iskol kuala lumpur uh, in the evening online uh, where our senior propar desa will be speaking about lord balram we'll all join there i will also join there So we'll not have a regular Saturday Bhagavatam class for this week. So next week I'll let you know. Uh, we'll probably do the class on Wednesday next week, uh, but the following Saturday I will let you know. Uh, but at least for the coming Saturday we won't have. So just reminding you, I had uh, mentioned this the last time as well. Okay, thank you very much. Antara Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai Shri Shri Krishna Balaram ki jai Shri Prabhupada ki jai Samavet Gaur Bhakta Vrindavan.